This is the second video in the multifunction workbench series. In this video, I'm going to install the bench top and make the cutting station. As you can see in this brief summary, it's very easy to operate and makes it possible to make repetitive cuts or cut bigger boards in a faster, more convenient and efficient way. I'll go over its functions in depth in the next few videos. First, I'm going to install a few pieces of light plywood, which will allow me to get some use out of the small gaps at the bottom of the bench. After cutting all their parts, I screw them on. I can use these gaps to store protection boards for the top or the vacuum tube, which I will later attach to the bench. Now I make sure the central part of the cabinets, which will later support the bench top, is at the same height as the bench frames. It seems I have to trim it a little. It probably won't be necessary, but I'm going to cut and glue on a few plywood parts to strengthen the central support and make it thicker. Now I can finally attach the bench top. It weighs around 60 kilograms, which means it's not going to be easy. I set it down on two pegs on the floor and against the back of the bench, just like I will do whenever I need to put big boards on the bench in order to cut them. It's a high-quality beach finger joint board, sent to me by the company Basic Madera. It will be perfect for this woodworking bench workbench hybrid, keeping it sturdy and stable when we are working. It's made with strips of wood that are glued together and connected by finger joints. With this kind of joint, and since it's hardwood, I think my bench top will stay in perfect condition for many years. If you are interested in this or other similar products, check out the link to the side below the video. First, we have to pre-cut it to side with a circular saw and a guide. I flip it over and apply a coat of matte water-based varnish. Now that it's upside down, I'll attach the vise as well. I flip it over one more time, measure its exact position and drill holes to fasten it to the bench frames.
I'll use hex lag screws with washers, meaning the top half of the holes should have the same diameter as the washers, and the bottom half should have the same diameter as the screws. I won't put screws in the central part of the top. I don't think they'll be necessary. Now, with the router, with its plunge base, I'll leave the edges of the tops completely flush. I'll use a flush trim router bit and an aluminum fence. I should make sure the back edge is straight in order to achieve straight cuts with my rip cut guide for the plunge circular saw. Now I measure the positions of all the holes in the benchtop, where I can put holdfast clamps and dogs. I stop a few millimeters short of drilling through to avoid damaging the bottom of the benchtop. I drill the first hole and make sure the steel rod is plumb. Now, with this router bit, I can remove that little amount of wood left in the holes. It's time to sand the entire surface of the benchtop and apply some linseed oil. I'll use oil because it will make maintenance easier. Then, using the leftover scraps of wood from the benchtop, I'll make the pieces that make up the rip cut guide. I make them straight with a planer and cut them to size. I have to make grooves to slide in the T-Track guides. We could also use a U-shaped aluminum profile here, like the one I installed on my table saw. With that same saw, I'll make the grooves in several runs. After configuring my 3D router, I'll machine the height adjustment grooves. They could also be made with a plunge router and a guide. With the router table, I'll make a rebate for the self-adhesive measuring tape. Finally, I apply some linseed oil on both pieces. I already made grip knobs with hard plywood and a square nut bolt. You can see how to make them in other videos in my channel. With them, I can attach the pieces to the bench.
I mark and fasten the T-Track guide screws and make sure the slider works ok. This model can be adjusted. By tightening a screw, the slider expands, reducing play. Next, I'll make the rip cut guide. I mark the hole where the circular saw will go and cut it on the table saw. I have to make some rebates for the circular saw's knobs and a bezel for its body. I do the same operation on both sides so that I can use the circular saw in both directions. With the table saw I make another groove to achieve a more precise cutting size and with the table router I cut a groove to lock the guide at the appropriate measurement for cutting. I make the other part of the guide, making recesses for the slider and the aluminum piece that will allow for a more precise adjustment of the cutting size with the table saw too. Now I'll prepare a piece of HPL to fit the guide rail that comes with a plunge circular saw in the bench and make cross cuts. I cut it on the table saw and finish it with the disc sander. I mark the position of the screws, drill holes on the rail and the HPL piece with a bit with less diameter to make a thread. I cut this piece of the T-Track guide through which the disc will run when making crosscuts. I also prepared this other piece to attach to the front of the workbench and fasten the rail on the other side. This way I can ensure the cuts are always square. I make a groove for the disc on the bench top, about 2 mm deep. Now I'll make another jig to cut angles and try out the cutting station while I'm at it. I also cut some board strips that I can set down on the bench top to avoid damaging it.
With the rest of the beach board, I build the other part of the miter jig like before, and I also prepare a steel pipe to work as rotation axis. I put the pieces together with screws, glue the tube on and fasten the T-track. Now all that's left is to make the miter jig stops. In order to make the process easier, I'll mill a long piece of plywood with the router, which I will later cut down to size. I make the rest of the rebates with a bandsaw. I cut and drill holes in the aluminum pieces that go on the T-Track guide, and that wraps it up for today. In a few days I'll post another video showing you how to build the whole fast clamps and workbench docks. See you soon.